Uh, today, I would like to try to uh, examine China's uh, current uh, development by analogy with uh, Japan's post-World War II developments. Sorry, I don't use a PowerPoint at all. Uh, Japan has also experienced uh, the D2 era, uh, though that term was not used. When I was at Harvard uh, in the first half of 1980s, America still did not have uh, all that much concern about China. The concern was rather about Japan, uh, which was uh, suddenly rising to prominence. Uh, it was in 1968 that the Japan outstripped uh, West Germany uh, to become the second largest economic power uh, in the world after the uh, United States. And this was uh, exactly four years after the Tokyo Olympic Games. Uh, three uh, years later, uh, there were the Nixon shocks, one of uh, which was uh, suspension of uh, the dollar as a convertibility into gold as a measure for uh, defending the U.S. dollar due to the Vietnam War, which had uh, left uh, America battered. Up to that point, uh, the dollar-yen uh, exchange rate had been fixed at uh, 360 yen to one dollar. Unable to withstand the pressure, Japan revalued the yen repeatedly, uh, but, uh, but then finally switched to a floating rate system in 1973. Now, uh, dollar is 90 yen. And then uh, there was uh, the first uh, energy crisis in 1974, and Japan uh, started uh, so-called uh, energy diplomacy, uh, mostly to Middle East because of uh, Japan's uh, scarce uh, resources. And the summit uh, conference of the leaders of uh, advanced uh, industrial countries, uh, today known as uh, the G8, was launched in 1975 as the G6, with Japan included in its ranks. The world by futurist uh, Harman Khan, entitled The Emerging Japanese Superstate, was published in 1970. And the Professor Vogels, uh, Japan as number one was published in 1979. In the 1980s, the emergence of Japan was uh, debated everywhere in the world. And the theory of a Japan threat, Japanese threat, also appeared. It seems even uh, called, uh, the, uh, called an evil empire, more, than, more dangerous than Soviet Union. <laughs> uh, looking back today, it was all quite uh, flattering. At that time, there was a boom in Japanese style management, uh, and it was uh, taught at uh, many American business schools. I moved to University of Michigan in 1983, uh, but uh, was afraid to go to nearby Detroit. Uh, this was because of a large number of uh, employed workers who had lost uh, jobs at the GM and uh, Ford, Ford uh, due to stiff uh, competition with the Japanese uh, autos. Although I maintained at the time that the theory of Japanese threat was not true, uh, to be quite honest about it, there was a place somewhere at the back of my heart where I felt a small amount, small amount of happiness <laughs> about this assessment of, assessment of Jap Japan's uh, abilities. I would bet uh, that the Chinese uh, people today harbor a similar mindset. Due to the Plaza Agreement in 1985, the yen value rose abruptly, and the Japanese corporations began moving their production base overseas. After that, public projects the public by, by government spending were expanded domestically in Japan in order to increase internal demand. And this uh, resulted in a real estate speculation and a bubble economy. And then in 1990, uh, immediately after the end of the Cold War, the bubble began to collapse. And the Japanese financial industry battled for a decade with a problem of uh, bad loans, just when it was uh, thought it was thought that uh, it was over. Japan experienced a renewed difficulties with the Asian currency crisis. And Japan is now afflicted by a shrinking of its uh, market due to the trend toward uh, smaller families and uh, the aging of its population. Uh, this dispar the disparity in the Japan's GDP to that of China was 4 to 1 as recently as the year 2000. 
but in the, the, the last decades, China has pulled even. At this peak, at, at its peak, the Japan's uh, GDP accounted for 18% of global uh, GDP, and currently it represents only 8%. Uh, China, the same, 8%. Part. That's the Japanese miracle, which attracted so much attention for 30 years, no longer interest anyone these <laughs> days. <laughs> China's modernization line began from 1978, but I think the current growth policies essentially began with the start of the socialist market economy in 1992. In the 18 years since then, China has repeated in one fell soup almost the exact same experience that Japan had in the course of its economic rise and fall for 50 to 60 years after the Second World War II. Uh, why, uh, will, will it be possible for China to avoid the failure suffered by Japan? To state my conclusion very frankly, honestly, it seems very difficult for China to avoid the problems experienced by Japan. This is because of the, the factors limiting uh, China's growth, uh, and particularly the fact that uh, the foundation in terms of the system and the regime is simply too weak. I further believe that the key, the problem in all this is the political system. The current orthodoxy of the Hu Jintao government is the building of the harmonious He Xie Shao Hui. But the reality is running contrary to this. There is a debate about the development models currently underway inside China. In the wake of a financial crisis, many specialists were criticizing the imposing, the westernization, and exploring a Chinese-style model that appears as, as though it may uh, overcome the crisis. There is nothing new about the Chinese-style model so far. The same debate which examined with such, as, such issues as state-led economic growth uh, premised on one-party rule, prioritization of stability, and uh, placing democracy on the back burner, uh, the development of deployments of an uh, uh, etatist industrial policy, the use of uh, Confucianism as a core value system, and so on, with uh, all the range uh, in Japan from the 1980s to the 1990s. It is almost identical to the so-called East Asian development uh, model, or the needs. Uh, Professor Volga also uh, analyzed that uh, point before. Now China's greatest uh, strength at present is the fact that uh, it has not uh, democratized. But, uh, but, but its greatest weakness is also that it has not uh, democratized. The Chinese political system probably will not uh, become uh, unsettled, unsettled in the short term, say probably next uh, five, ten years. I don't know, <laughs> five years, I say. The reasons are that, the first of all, it has uh, self-confidence based on the 30 years history of reforms and opening. Secondly, the controlled market economy, so-called state capitalism, is effective in an extraordinary situation such as a global financial crisis like the current one. And thirdly, the world, first among which is the United States, Japan as well, does not want uh, any chaos in China. But I think that uh, there is something more crucial than this. It is the politics of vested interest due to the structural collision between Chinese politics and economics. The total number of Chinese Communist Party members now at present is approximately uh, 78 million people. Of, of these, in, in 2000, uh, 2008, Workers accounted for only 9.7%, while the peasants represented approximately 31%, or a total of 40% of a membership. But their numbers are continuing to decrease, and they are no longer the representatives of the Pareto in yet. In their stead, the cadres of party and the government are approximately 8%, and what is more interesting is that 
is the, fa is the fact that the socially ultra elite level represented by enter enterprise uh, uh, managers, scientific and technical specialists, employees of foreign enterprises, lawyers, and so on, now account for ac approximately 22%. With the advent of the 21st century, Jan Zemin announced the so-called three represents and the world paid attention to the admission of a private entrep entrepreneurs to the CCP. However, actual number is not as great as this. The group that is vastly greater than ordinary private entrepreneurs are those former CCP cadres and their children who have devoted themselves to the world of business, primarily state-owned enterprises, or oh, Shanghai. The true main aim of the three represent was to ensure the party membership of such a party cadres and their children, no matter how hard they strove for em embroidery cement. I say. The most uh, important thing in China is income distribution. The construction of a harmonious society is correct. But the problem is how to realize it. What is uh, required involves the question of whether or not the financial disclosure for, for state-owned enterprise and uh, the wealthy stratum, stratum is possible. The tax revenue for personal income is only one quarter, of, one quarter that of Japan which is the lowest among uh, the OECD, Japan stand. And even though there are systems for uh, the inheritance tax and the progressive taxation, these are not functioning. The majority of the taxes in the de deficit are collected from foreign-owned corporations and uh, uh, Chinese private enterprises under the very, uh, variety of uh, uh, pretexts. In other words, the establishment of financial disclosure and the tax system constitutes the first step in democratization in China. However, this is likely impossible, uh, impossible given the current collective leadership system. Or to phrase it uh, differently, uh, this uh, uh, tributive policy, politics uh, ruled by the vested interest. Uh, the biggest problem with the contemporary Chinese political system are the non-disclosure of information and lack of uh, transparency, which ignore the tacit pressure of the society and uh, inequality of opportunity rising from this. Why was Japan unable to sustain its success, despite the fact that it achieved a trajectory of economic growth following that World War II? Its economy succumbed to the bubble in the latter part of the 1980s. Japan became intoxicated by the successes and uh, persisted too rigidly in its uh, Japan-style development model. This was a state-led growth model, and it was uh, deficient when uh, it came to constellation for society and the individual. individual. In order for it to have become a G2 power in a real sense, though Japan needed to open up uh, its uh, closed society, including a market, the information, and the system. A nation state where the society and the individuals supporting society are weak cannot, in the final analysis, become a larger uh, a leader. It cannot uh, become a leader of the world. Moreover, while, while self-confidence is a prerequisite, the arrogance is dangerous. Probably U.S. US had the same problem. This is one of the lessons that Japan, which failed to become the G2 power hold for China, probably two, min two more minutes. China is today extremely interested in Japan's experiences in the 1980s, and many, many economic bureaucrats and scholars are analyzing it. The key the theme is why did Japan economic experience uh, experience a such bubble, such a bubble, and then succumb to to it. Many Chinese believe that uh, this was due to American pressure on Japan to revalue the yen. The thesis holds that the result of the Plaza Agreement in 1985 was a decline in the dollar's value, in the rise and the uh, rise in the yen's value. 
And owing to this, many large corporations were forced to expand overseas, in addition to which there was an effort to extend the domestic demands inside Japan by, a, by a Bank of Japan's policy of low interest uh, 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 rates, with the result, with the result that uh, speculation became concentrated in the, land, in the land due to its scarcity value. In the case of China, but in a, a bubble in a housing due uh, to its uh, a scarcity value is already occurring at the present before the re-evaluation of the Chinese yuan. And nonetheless, if there is uh, no alternative but for the yuan to be revalued and moreover for uh, internal uh, demands to be uh, expanded, the fear that this will uh, result in a bubble and inflation will spiral out of control is spreading. Moreover, when it, come, it comes to revaluing the, the yuan in response to Americans' uh, the request, uh, foreign pressure, gaias, the problem of uh, faith means uh, lies at the heart of the China's uh, true feelings about the matter. In the in reality, in reality, in reality, reality that the Chinese have not fully learned lessons of Japan's area a failure here. For example, despite the fact that Japan should have devalued the yen earlier than the Plaza Agreement, it did not do so. The switch to a floating rate system occurred in 1973, after which Japan was not able to revalue the yen owing to the domestic political demand, despite the owing economic uh, frictions with America for a long time. So the revaluation, re-evaluation of the yen was put off until the 1908, uh, uh, 1985 Plaza Agreement. This was more the resolution of the United States than the decision by Japan. Had Japan implemented the gradual re-evaluation of the yen from the earlier point in time, it is possible that uh, no bubble economy would have occurred. And this is the lesson that I, I have uh, myself learned from many, many Japanese officials in charge in, at the time. In other words, it is crucial for China to learn the lessons of Japanese experience, but I'd like to, uh, I, I'd like to, it to do so without mistakes. Thank you. <laughs>